2855 Merrimack Street. Come one, come all. The blessings of the Lord is happening over here. Yeah. And we thank God for his word that we live yeah. by, yeah. we grow by, yeah. we are kept by, and I thank God for it today. So at this time, we're going to present to some and introduce to others. For those that don't know, Pastor Paul D. King. So as he comes, we thank God for him because he don't preach his own words. He don't preach his own precepts and concepts, but he preaches the word of God. And our souls are fed. There's a famine in the land. But I tell you one thing over here and up on this rock, we eat good. And I just thank God for our food. Thank God for our daily bread that we are about to receive. So let's clap our hands at this time. And we go forth. Hallelujah. That's right. Come on, let's magnify your God. He's worthy to be praised. The Bible said from sun up to sundown, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Amen. And that's what we're doing in this place today. I thank God for his power and his presence that's thank in the you, room. Jesus. We thank God for you that have tuned in by the way of internet. Amen. God is moving by his spirit. Amen. These are the days to get to know God. Hallelujah. Amen. And to surrender who you are and all of you to the one amen that said, let that be. Praise the Lord. And it is God himself that gives you new Hallelujah. beginnings. And that's why we're worshiping and praising the Lord this morning in this service. As we look to him in prayer, let us all look to him in prayer. Father, we praise you and we bless you, O oh God, for what you're doing even right now. We thank you for moving all throughout the land, in this place, in internet land, all over where mankind is at. We're praying, God, that you will continue to move by your spirit and do great things to meet the needs of those that are looking for a better way. Yes. Those that don't know you as a yet in the departing of their sin. Those that have not heard the gospel preached in power. Let this be the day and time that the entering of the word will come into their life and do great things. We're praying today, God, for those that stand in need, that have lost loved ones, and stand in need of peace and comfort in families. Lord, by the power of your spirit, comfort and console those that are going through heavy and dark times. In the name of Jesus, we believe you to do it. We know the needs are great, but you are great God. And you can do all things but fail. We're praying, God, that you will send your word this morning and let your word have a free course into our lives, into our hearts, and our minds. That it will bring forth that that you sent out to do. These things we pray and ask in Jesus' name. And all of God's people shouted hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together one more time before you before you see it. Amen. It is unto our God. Amen. That we do honor this morning. Praise God for one more day in Him. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. I thank God. Amen. For just another opportunity to stand before such a great people. Amen. I want you to know, amen. I know life can hit you with blows and make you feel like you have no value. Amen. You can be saved and that devil will make you feel like you nothing. Amen. But you got to be reminded and made known. Oh, yes, you somebody now. Amen. When you belong to God, he looks at you like this. You are a chosen generation. A raw priesthood and a holy nation. Amen. I mean to tell you, 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 might, you might be in a, in a spot in your life where you feel like, oh my God, I lost my way. Or amen. Or I, 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 I let loose. You, you got to know this morning that when he saved you, he knows, amen, that you can make it in him. And so it's not for you to give up, but to look up. Thank God, because your help draweth now unto you. Amen. We thank God this morning for everyone in their respective places. Amen. The people of God, our teachers, amen, evangelists, amen, that's in the midst of us. Oh, we just having a time watching these handmaids go forward. Yes. Amen. Over oh, in the Lord's been yes. God. Amen. I want to encourage them. Amen. And you even that's out there in the internet land, if you are handmaiden of God, amen, you put on your strength. 
amen, and be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might and please him. I, I get it, amen. We got these men, amen, that's in these platforms and with a narrow-minded self where they can't see, amen, they left foot from the right that don't realize it's not about the vessel, it's about the voice of God that's in the vessel. Amen. You know, the Bible said my sheep will know, they know my voice. And a stranger they will not follow. Amen. But we're in the hour in time, the abuse that it seemed like the handmaidens, the women of God, amen, that God has sought to use in long duration. They've been abused, amen. They've been they've been set on, amen. It seemed like they done come out of looking at the scriptures with some upside down revelation, like God won't use no woman to teach or tell you something. Amen. At the end of the day, if you ever grow up, yes, even those of us in fivefold, you'll remember that Paul said that is neither male nor female. Amen. At the end of the day, it's about God speaking through the vessel. And we need to hear what God has to say. Amen. To whoever, whoever he wants to use to say it. That we can be all what God would have us to be. So I salute the women of God. Amen. I thank God for these uh, these lessons, these these meetings we've been having about equipping the saints yes. to encourage the leadership. Amen. Encourage the teachers and the preachers. Amen. And the prophets and amen. The gifts that God has given. Amen. That you can be all what God has called you to be. Yes. It's never been a time to rise up and stand up. Do it now. Amen. It's all about pleasing God. Amen. If, if, if God would not have used some integral women in the Bible, the brethren would still be sitting down in the backsliding waves. Amen. But oh, thank God somebody had enough in them to say, I just can't receive it. And I got to run to the tomb. I just don't believe it's going to end like this. And she ran in there and saw some things. You know, hey, when you know that's a gift of prophets and prophets when you can see things. She saw he wasn't there. Amen. They saw the napkin just neatly hung up, folded up. Amen. She realized, oh, and got a message from God through the angel. Amen. And said, you go tell them, brethren. Amen. Look here. Don't let nobody tell you, sisters, that you can't speak for God. If God put it down in you, you go tell the brethren. Amen. You go tell the church the goodness and the power of God. That we can come into that edifying spot and that perfected area that God has called the church into. You know, even in the natural, I don't even understand why I'm going here, but I'm going to go with God. Amen. That even in the natural, most people can't respect no man that put his hand on a woman. Amen. You know, they call it abuse. Amen. At the end of the day, with your strong self, and you know you can do what you can do with them, but you're going to put your hands on them and do it. Don't nobody have respect for people that do that. Amen. I, I, even as a kid, I grew up, I couldn't, res I couldn't respect a man that would call himself going to bully a woman. It's like, oh, go, go get you somebody that can slap you back. Amen. You know, I always felt like that. That's pretty weak. Amen. And, and, and for a man to do that. And I got to give you that graphic because that's what people are doing in the spirit over in the churches. These men are abusing. Amen. The abusing, abusing, spiritual abuse. Amen. And what God has chosen for such a time as this. So I say to you, be healed. I say to you, be delivered. Amen. If you not receive that up, get you out of there. You go somewhere where God will lead you. Amen. And put you somewhere to be nourished and nurtured. Amen. That God, amen, can finish what he started in you. Amen. So he might do great things through you. Is that all right? Come on, somebody. Let's give God a great big hand of praise. Oh, yes. Amen. We're excited, amen, for what the Lord is doing, amen, how he's doing it, these words, this word that has been coming, it just, it just, hey, it got us on fire, amen, this morning. We're going back to, uh, with part two of what we left on last time when we were before you, amen, the title of the message is Holy, 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 amen, and I can't get away from it because the subject is also Holy, Holy, Holy. Amen. And as we were leaving off with you on last Sunday, this is what God, because he is holy, is calling man unto. You know, and then when you really get a good glimpse of holiness, holiness brings this thing all together. 
Amen. God is looking for holiness. He just don't want you to know he's holy. Amen. He wants you to be holy in all manner of conversation. And you know, we all come from a walk and a life, amen, where we didn't know God and was accustomed to doing evil and didn't know how to perform that which was right. And to the point we just gave up and said, we can't do no better. Amen. But something down within you just kept on crying out. It got to be something better. It seemed like the more you did what you did, the voidness that was in your life, you found it never really being fulfilled. Until one day you just got sin sick and tired of the way you were going. Tired of failing, tired of being in toxic situations, tired of being without strength. And you said, Lord, I need your help. And he drew you unto himself. Thank God. How many know you can't come unless he draw you? Amen. You didn't bring yourself to God. He drew you. Amen. He looked beyond your fault and saw your need. Amen. He understood that something that was overpowering to you, it could not overpower him. And it was his will and his good pleasure to save you and deliver you. And so when you got tired, you called out. And when you called out, he heard that cry. Don't let nobody tell you that he don't hear your cry now. Amen. We went somewhere one time and the man was saying that God don't hear sinners. Amen. I mean, the preacher, the pastor said, God don't hear sinners. Amen. I said to myself, oh my God, then how did we get in here? Amen. Because even those of us as pastors and preachers, we had, we had always been saved. Amen. We had to call on God one day. Amen. I know I did. Amen. And said, Lord, I need you to help me. I need you to save me. And I wasn't saved. I wasn't even, I hadn't even repented of my sins yet. But he heard my cry. Amen. David said, this poor man cried. And he heard my cry. I want you to know whatever state you in, if you cry out unto God. Amen. It makes no difference that you ain't in the church doing like everybody else doing the church. They just forgot they ain't always been there. Amen. But oh, look, he come to save that which is lost. And you got to long and walk for him. But that was, that was, that, that's what he was teaching. And my heart went out to the people because I'm saying, wow. Amen. No wonder the church have got into the condition that he is and you get so saved and get so holy. We can't help nobody. Well, I want you to know that ain't salvation and neither is that holiness. When you find yourself can't help nobody and you just going to sit there with your saved self and keep it to yourself. Amen. You can't do that when God has been good to you. You got to let a dying world know that I once was, but look at me now. Amen. That ain't giving no glory to the devil. That's glorifying God. That I once was messed up. I once didn't have no strength. I once couldn't live right. I once couldn't do right. But all that gift that God gave to the world because he loved him. Amen. He saved my life. Somebody say amen. 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 And when he saved us, he which is holy, he called us unto holiness. Amen. And it's a shame when you have to deal and you deal with an hour that we're in and you hear so much teaching. Some of these places, they try to teach stuff they really don't know. They just teach stuff they hear other folks say. But when you have an experience with God and you realize one touch from him and he can straighten you out. One touch from him and he can heal your sin sick soul. One touch from him and he can drive out your sickness and diseases. One touch from him and he can give you strength in place of your weakness. Somebody say amen. Amen. So when we look at this, what we got going on today, you don't hear too much about the holiness of God. Amen. Because those that are teaching and preaching really don't know too much about it. Amen. Because you really can't preach what you don't know. But the Lord gave us to know, amen, you declare and make the people to know, holy, holy is I am. And that's what I call man unto. And you know, I know we said in place and they said there's only one that's holy. Yeah, he is holy and emancipates from him. Amen. But I need you to know if you received him, that's what comes into your life. Because he's going to show you the way. Somebody say amen. amen. This morning, amen, we're going back. I want Sister Lisa, if you don't mind, Lady Lisa, I want you to get for me over there in Isaiah. Amen. I want you to get for me over there in Isaiah. Uh, we're going to deal with, amen, it was the sixth chapter where Isaiah saw the Lord. Amen. And we want to deal with that and, and, and finish up. 
amen, what the Lord, amen, has given us in such a time as this to be a blessing and a benefit to the hearers. Oh, bless his name. Isaiah 6, 1 through 3 is where I'm going to have you at. Amen. Isaiah 6, 1 through 3. Amen. I want her to read that. If you have that, amen, say amen. Amen. What did the Bible say? In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, uh -huh. high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. Oh and one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. Mm -hmm. The whole earth is full of his glory. Hallelujah. And this was a man, an uh, angel, a man of God. Amen. And the Bible said, as the prophet was speaking, this was the year that King Uzziah died. Amen. And I want you to know something because, you know, when some people, they get out there and they see Uzziah died and they'll come with, oh, when you die, that's when you see the Lord. Well, the Bible say Uzziah died. Amen. And also, I don't know if Uzziah saw the Lord, but Isaiah did see the Lord. Amen. And I want you to know something, amen, before you try to get to the to get to that spot. You have to see some things to be totally, amen, convicted and convinced who he is. And the way God has called this and set it all up is on the preachers, amen, to put before men and women the door of hope, the door of salvation, amen, the door of deliverance, the door of strength. Everything you seem to be can't get, he's to preach to you and let you know it's all found in Jesus. And so what the Lord was doing, it was giving us a good mark, a mark of history. That as I died, and here come Isaiah coming on the scene. Amen. And Isaiah was spoken like this, and the Bible records it. He said, I seen the Lord. And the Lord revealed to Isaiah who he was and what he was calling man unto. And it's amazing, amen, how the Lord enlightened him by letting him see the angels, amen, in such a way where it gave us a description, the two wings that would cover them face and two wings to fly. And, 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 and the, uh, you know, it's amazing how he give us the description to behold. And, and then when you look at that, you know, let me pause on that. Because, you know, sometimes when you get to preaching like this, it seems like people get interested. And when you talk about angels and you get to talk about this and that, it seems like they get more interested in that than Jesus. But because in this message today, I want you to know whatever we touch on, the highlight of it is he who is holy. Because what the angels did, they had enough to understand all oh, this magnificent one, he who is all power. Amen. None can compare. They're flying and going back and forth talking about holy, holy, holy. Amen. I mean, that was the message that God gave Isaiah to hear. Amen. Makes me mindful of when God called Israel out of the land of Egypt. Amen. He was calling them unto himself and calling them into be a people that he had begotten. He wanted and declared them to be holy. Amen. Holiness is not a denomination. Amen. Oh, no. It's the nature of God. And I know many that's been in church houses, they look at that thing like it's a denomination. But I would have you to know holiness is not no denomination. Amen. It is the nature of God that has been implanted in those that have received the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeah. See, this word, which is the seed of God, amen, is a, it, it is a, a incorruptible seed. It's a holy seed. And when you receive this seed, amen, it got a way of taking over in your life. Amen. As it begins to mature, as it begins to expand and grow, oh, it gives you the ability to do what you ain't never been able to do. Amen. Because it gives you a new nature. If it's ever been a time for believers to come to identify, amen, with the one you call Father, it, that time is now. It's been high time, but
but it's time to identify with Father God. Amen. Not trying to make this journey identifying with the old man and then you're going to try to identify with the new man. You got to realize that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things have passed away and behold, all things have become new. Amen. We're going to work our way and we're going to get there because see, we're in a time where so many organizations and doctrines of man that have been inspired by the devil. Amen. That have ripped the, that have ripped the word from the believers and the hearers. Amen. That have stolen the word of God because they don't see it and they get up and they try to preach what they don't see and they'll tell you you saved but then tell you you still the same. Amen. I want you to know what God God saved you from your sins. You become a child of God. Amen. You're not what you used to be. Don't you let that come out your mouth. God don't see you the way you once was. He see you as a new creature. Amen. That's the whole thing about repenting of your sins. You change your mind concerning the direction that you're going. And you come to him and he make you all over. You don't have the same mind. You don't have the same heart. Your soul has been saved. And now you have to identify with the new creature. Amen. You know what you once was, but keep proclaiming. I'm not what I used to be. I am what God say I am. Somebody say amen. amen. And so if you look at this, it was important, amen, for us to capture this. He told Isaiah, Isaiah wrote, he saw him, they said, holy, holy, holy is what the angels were saying, amen, as he called Isaiah. Amen. Makes me wonder who's really been called. Come on. We got a lot of stuff that's out here and they don't teach and preach the nature of God. They put self-knowledge and sense knowledge and teach a whole lot of fabrication of earthly and worldly things and don't really let man know that God comes into your life. Amen. To make it all over again. That he, yeah. that, that he can straighten you up and give you and heal you and yeah. give you what you ain't never had. This holy God that we find the angels Amen. Crying and saying, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Amen. For Isaiah to see this getting his call, it gives me to know when you see something like this, you ain't going to come out the gate teaching peanuts and pretzels and teaching all this old funny stuff they're doing today. Amen. You're going to come out magnifying who God is. Amen. Let folks know that, hey, he chosen you. Amen. Yeah. To represent him in times like these. Yeah. I believe the church has been called out of darkness into this marvelous light. It's the church that is to be the beacon of light. If you say you know God, amen, let the world see you know God. Amen. Let your life be a reflection of who God is. Amen. Because that's what takes place when he comes into your life. Now you have to be taught some things. You have to grow. But you got to recognize, amen, what's taking in place in you, amen, is God himself is manifesting his power and his spirit in your life, and your life, amen, should resemble who he is. Now, when we teach on this and we talk about holiness because we have a bad and improper presentation of holiness because we got it going and, you know, some people, is they think they so far on the spectrum and they say, well, you don't do this and don't wear that and you don't do that and they think that's holy, but I found out folks that don't do that outward appearance stuff, amen, they inside parts are blacker than a hundred midnights, amen, they full of hatred, they full of deceit, strife, envy, and they can't ain't staying they brother, but they come in there with their dresses dragging the flow and their faces can be clean and they got all this other stuff, but I want you to know holiness that God is calling for, it starts on the inside and he'll help you how to do about the outside, but too many people, amen, have made, amen, the things that the outward is not the main thing, amen, at the end of the day, when you let them do it from the inside, you'll find out you can't get holiness from no mall, you can't go to the store and get it off the rack. Amen. Oh no, you uh, uh you can't do that. You can't you can't do that. It's the nature of God to get in 
you to teach you how to treat folks. Uh, amen. Teach you how to be kind and teach you how to love people. Amen. How to have compassion and grace. Uh, and if we take a good look out that window, I don't see holiness, amen, on display like it should. Amen. Because now these days uh, we come in such a way all we do is pick at. Amen. Uh, the sinner, the one that say don't know God, then we measure ourselves, say, look at them and then look at me. No, no, that ain't how you're supposed to do this. Right, Amen. You're right. supposed to see the need, and if you got that holy God in you, he'll give you how to love somebody right into him. Somebody yeah. say amen. amen. The Bible said, with love and kindness have I drawn you. This holy God that we're living for and that we're walking before, he want to get a hold of mankind. Amen. That he can represent in man who he is that others might see if he done it for you, then I know he can do it for me. Because I know you was a booger bear and we did the same things together. But my God, you don't do them no more. Then I want what you got. It ain't for you to sit there and say, oh, look how messed up you are. Because you remember you was messed up one day. But because the Lord has done what he's done, you are what you are today. Somebody say amen. And so when we behold this, amen, holiness really, amen, when you look at this, it really is all about who God is. And that's why we find the scripture that said what it said. Now, Sister Lady Lisa, I want you to get for me 1 Peter 1 and 23 and 2 Peter 1 and 3. And I want to take this time to teach this to give a good enlightenment of what holiness is really all about. Amen. Because one thing is for certain. Amen. There is a difference between light and darkness. There's a difference between the actions of God and the actions of the devil. Boy, these handmaids, they've been going forth. I mean, Lady Lisa came in here. Boy, she's been letting in that on uh, the attributes of this devil. His ways don't look nothing like God's ways. You know, there was a passage in Old Testament time when God was dealing with the people, amen, and said, my ways are not like your ways. They're higher than, I mean, the heaven is in the earth. Amen. And so if his ways are not like our ways, then we have to take on his ways or allow his ways to have, the, have their way in our life to be a representative of him. Now, the, the purpose of it is that the whole earth be full of his glory. Amen. Because he wants mankind, amen, to represent who he is. And so then, therefore, in the clergyism, we got to learn how to stop preaching our denomination and organization and just start preaching him who is holy. Amen. Let folks know it ain't about I'm a Baptist, I'm a Methodist, I'm a Episcopalian, I'm a Catholic, I'm a this, I'm a Seventh day. Look away with all that. What's wrong with just being a believer in Christ Jesus? Because he called all men to be holy. Somebody say amen. But you know, when they're preaching for their business and preaching for their organization, they got to put their twist on that. We in the day and hour, folks don't do nothing but talk about baptism. Amen. Like water baptism going to make you holy. Amen. They ain't got nothing but that message. But at the end of the day, he want the church to be edified and perfected. Somebody say amen. What did 1 Peter 1 and 23 say? This is Apostle Peter that God used to write these words. What did the Lord say through him? Being born again, not of the corruptible seed, but of the incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Uh-huh. And then 2 Peter 1 and 3. I want you to also get 2 Peter 1, 3 and 4. So remember that, being born again, not of the corruptible seed, but of the incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. forever. So we get born again by the hearing of the word. Faith come by hearing, hearing by the word. When you get born again, you're born of the incorruptible seed. That incorruptible seed is nothing. That seed is full of holiness. That's the nature of God that gets implanted within believers. And as you walk and come to learn and amen and hear of him, that seed that's been implanted within you, it begins to grow. And when that seed grows, it grows you. 
Amen. You got to understand this. Amen. When we're seeking growth and we're seeking to come higher. Amen. It's all about Christ coming through our lives. It's all about nobody seeing you. You begin to cease to exist and all folks see you as doing new things, being a new creature. You don't act like the way you used to act. You don't respond the way you used to respond. Amen. You're not mean no more. You're nice. You don't lie no more. You tell the truth. Amen. You don't live no dirty life. You live a clean life. Amen. You don't walk around like you don't have strength because brother, sister, you got strength when you receive Jesus because you've been begotten by that incorruptible seed and you took on a new birth. Now you didn't go back into your mama's womb. Amen. Because you can't get in there. That's what Nicodemus, amen, was flustered on. What is this being born again. How can a man be born again as he get back in his womb? No, Nicodemus, I know you're the chief ruler. I know you got yourself up like you know God. But Nick came by night. And I want you to know something. Theology and all of your study books will tell you Nick didn't want to be identified. And Nick didn't want to go through persecution. I'll, I'll give you another perspective. Why don't you look at it like this? Because anybody that has ever heard the truth Amen. You can't shake it. I mean, my God, you can hear this preacher preaching today and still stay in your sin. But brother, if the Lord is knocking at your door, you're going to be sitting there trying to light your little joint. And you're going to hear this message. And you can't shake it. And so what Nick was doing, he heard him teaching. If you remember, Jesus said, I say to you again, let me know Nick heard him teaching. Amen. And so Nick said, I can't get no sleep. I'm going where he's at. And when he got to where Jesus was at, Jesus said, hey, Nick, you got to be born again. Amen. And I want folks to know because we got a lot of folks that they're receiving Christ, but they're not being born again. Right. Amen. You got to realize when you receive Christ, he make you a new creature. Amen. You don't think like you used to think. You don't do what you used to do. You don't go the places you used to go. You don't even have a mind to do it. The devil may bring them thoughts back to you. Amen. But you're going to learn that's the devil and that's not you. Amen. That you're going to learn you got the ability not to live the way you once used to live because you've been born again of the incorruptible seed. Somebody say amen. And I don't care how much sin you in. I don't care if you're homosexual or lesbian. It makes no difference if you're a liar or a deceiver. If you receive this word, he'll make you all over again. And what I love about God, because he's holy, amen, when he forgives you, he don't remember it no more. When he forgives you of your sins, he don't hold that against you. Amen. How many people have been around, folks say they say, and all, all, they, all they try to do is throw at you what you once used to do, who you once used to be. Some of us got them relatives that they don't see you as new creatures. They say you as little Johnny. Little Susie, I remember you was fast. I remember you was a knucklehead. Amen. See, they ain't got no sight. But real believers, when they see the saints, amen, they realize, amen, I see God. Amen. Because it's the Lord, amen, that does great things in our life. Read on for me, Sister Tony, over there. Where we at? Where we at over there in 1 Peter 2? 2 Peter 2. 2 Peter 2. What one, the Bible? 2 Peter 1. 2 Peter 1. 3 and 4. Is Read. That correct? Yes. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Uh -huh. Through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. Yes. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. That by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. See, this is what holiness does. This is he who is holy. This is what he do. Amen. And when you understand what Peter was saying, his divine power is his word. Amen. Because it's by his word, he said, let there be and it was. It's by his word that became flesh, that paid the price for man's sin. It's by his word he became the door that you can escape and run for your life. 
Amen. You ain't got to be running because you're scared of the devil. You just running because you love the Lord. Amen. And that you saying, Lord, I want your mission and your will to be done in my life. I surrender and I turn my life over to you. Amen. And because of that, as you go on, his nature began to be manifested in you. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying, look here. Amen. You can have all them outward stuff like the Pharisee had. They had it out with appearance, but they inward parts was like raging wolves. They had hearts, amen, that was not after God. Amen. They looked down on people. Amen. Look at even how they wrote it back then. Here go Mary Magdalene, the one that God cast the seven devils out. Amen. But back in the day, they didn't see her as being changed. They just said she was the one that the prostitute, they couldn't go no further than what she used to be. But I want you to know, amen, don't you never look at yourself at what you once was. Always look at yourself at who you are in God when you receive his saving grace. Because you got to identify knowing that God, you're my father and I am your child. Now what I'm getting at when Isaiah saw this and he said, and he saw the angel said, holy, 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 the Lord was teaching his prophet that he was going to use and sin to a nation of people that I took on ways and they were not in the heart and the mind of God, that he was going to have to stand before them and make them to know who God is, that they can line up with their father. Amen. And that's what the preacher is supposed to be doing. He's not supposed to preach on you or at you. He's supposed to preach, amen, that you can press and strive to be all what God has called you to be. But it seems like that's what we've turned the platform into. It seemed like, hey amen, this one get up here and this and this and that. Not really preaching that man can be better. Hey amen. I mean, rather, we will sit there. I hear people that will tell same people, well, you know, we sinners. I mean, look, I know I once was. Because I don't believe you can be a sinner and a saint at the same time. I think you erred when you went through the scripture when Paul said, I'm the chiefest. He was referencing what he once was. Because if you keep reading on, so sometimes you got to read on. He will let you know that he's been changed and now he's a chosen of God. Amen. So we all come from sin, but we don't continue in our sins because he was of holy. He brings us out and gives us his strength. Amen. When you're a baby, amen, you're not as strong as you're going to be when you want. You're not as strong as you're going to be when you five. You're not as strong as you're going to be when you ten. Well, it's the same way when you get born again. Now, don't get him messed up now. He give you power. But you don't have all the strength you're going to walk into because you got to be developed. And how can you be developed if the preacher won't teach unto you who you are and what's on the inside of you? You got that incorruptible seed in you. You got a treasure in that earthen vessel. And that's all I'm here to do. I won't the poor to know they can be rich. I want the man to know that might not be saved. Brother God will give you a treasure for your poorness. If you would say, Lord, come into my life and take this away out of me and get this out of me. He will save you and give you precious you. Somebody say amen. I am a witness what God can do. Amen. He can come into your life and knock out of it. You ain't got to get He'll knock it out of you. He will drive out those demonic forces yes, that had you doing what you were doing. Yes, you thought it was you. You thought it was you. I, this is what I do. This is my life. You identify with that life. But then you don't want that life no more. The Lord said, I'll come into your life and do what you can't do. He comes in and drive out forces of hell. Drive out the spirit of fornication, the spirit of lying, the spirit of deceit, the spirit of witness. He comes in with power. This Bible said to as many as receive him, to them give he power. Power to be holy. Power to be delivered. Power to be strong. He give you power to make it. Amen. He don't give you weakness so you can give up. If you get knocked down, that power say, get up on your feet. Amen. And walk. 
walk on. Sometimes you got to stand there. Amen. You, before you get to walking, you got to gather yourself. Well, just stand there. Stand right there and get your bands together. Sometimes you got to just start out walking. And that strength coming, and then you get to trotting. And then you get to mounting up with wings. But, brother, I just want you to know, amen, if you get started, the one that is author and finisher, he can take you down the road. Somebody say amen. amen. And put you around people that have come to know God. That would encourage you in your walk with God in holiness, in power, in victory, in sanctification. That will let you know, uh, 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 wait a minute, you are a new creature. It don't make no difference because the devil is whispering what you used to do. Yeah. You just recognize he's lying to you. Yeah. Just because you hear him, it don't mean you sin. Just because you get a thought. I know preachers preaching this stuff out here that's not accurate. Amen. Jesus got thoughts, but he didn't sin. The devil gave Jesus thoughts. If you be the son of God. He was talking to Jesus. Amen. He going to talk to any and everybody. But when you know who you are. And you know your father. Amen. When you realize he which is holy got power. And has given you power yeah. to tell that devil, no, I'm not here no more. You don't do that to me no more. Amen. I don't live for you. I live for God. I choose not to live like I once lived because he called me to clean life. And it ain't no burden. See, some people have been over here and they tried to represent God and they act like it's a burden over here. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You got to live right. Oh, my God. See, that's the problem. It ain't that you got to live right. You live the life you choose to live. Amen. I do what I do because I love him. And when my eyes came open to him, I felt compelled to do it for him. Because I lived so long not knowing and not living a life to him. And But he looked beyond all my faults. And I said, look, Lord, I owe you for helping me. Because it could have been me that died in my sins and opened up my eyes in hell. But because you who is holy looked beyond my fault and saw my need and gifted me and graced me. Amen. Praise the Lord. In such a way I realize I am what I am because of you. Amen. And so when I stuck with him and walked with him, I found out that all things work together for your good. Amen. I found out the scripture wasn't divided to everybody. But he did say uh, uh, in Romans 8 and 28, he said it's for those that love the Lord. All things Things work together for the for the good for those, not for everybody, but for those that love the Lord. So I found out when I got saved, just because trouble came, that don't mean that God left me. Just because problems came, that don't mean that God ain't stunting me. I found out God said, This is why I chose you. Because my holiness is going to be represented in the earth. And when the devil come in like a flood, then you're gonna stand right there and let the world know what I do. Because if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. And what you've been delivered from, amen, when it come up, you're going to look the devil in the face and let him know, I am a son of God. And I don't have to do it no more because he gave me power. Amen. Look, holiness is not a drag. It's the nature of God. It's a privilege and an honor, amen, to represent him, to let his, to let his nature shine through your life. It shouldn't be like this, amen, with people. I was telling one of my children, because I got children, that I want to be saved. I want to see them saved. Yeah. And they come up around, amen, and I said around, not in, watching people in church. And see, you don't have to be saved to look at folks and say, man, that ain't right. Uh, come on. And they come around and they say, a bunch of backbiting, envy and jealous, people that proclaim to be saved, talk about one another, watch them do all type of evil, and then they be like this. I don't want to be messing with that because they not they basing God on what they see people do. And I have to many times let them know, I say, listen, don't knock the church, that's people. 
Because the church that God is coming back for don't do what you have been seeing with your own eyes. He's coming back for a church with, that, that's, that's not backbiting. That's not evil. They got real love for their brothers and sisters. Did they got evil going on? I know sometimes people in the building might do that, but I don't want you to think that's what God is because the devil will show them them things and don't want them to come in and be the church. You know, we were teaching in leadership classes and amen, the Lord gave us a knowledge and understanding to know, amen, that you got to be the church. We got to do church and have church. Amen. To be the church, you got to come and assemble yourself together and be taught who you are. Taught how to represent God. That when you come in to have church, you can celebrate because the Lord has given you victory like you ain't never had. Amen. That you can re represent what the church is really all about. Amen. It's not about lifting up, you know, like looking down on people and saying, oh, look at him. No, no. That ain't how the church looking at people. The real people of God remember they once was but if it had not been for the mercy of God, they still be doing what they used to do. Amen. Sometimes people say they get saved and they forget they once was. But holiness won't let you do that. It's the nature of God that you can remember Lord, I ain't always been like this and neither did I change myself. I tell people all the time I was a curser. Amen. I would curse. I was cursed. I was having a brother, a, a conversation with my brother the other day and I mean I used to curse I cursed like a sailor amen every third word was a curse word but it was something about when I went around my parents uh -huh. what happened? my God it seemed like the respect because the way we came up uh -huh. and I look back over my life it was like man it seemed like because they was boy, who they was because we had respect that demon couldn't make me curse like that uh huh I had respect for elderly people. Yes, yes, yes. You see what I'm saying? Yes. I had respect, but I mean, as soon as I got around them, boy, I was letting them go. Uh -huh. But I'm bringing it out because the way we came up and the way we view things, amen, because what we had, we had a respect, not knowing at the time when we weren't doing it, but we realized they represented, they stood for God. Uh -huh. And there's just certain things you can't do. Now we got kids that will just cuss around us Amen. I mean, roll up and come in with it on. I was a grown man, and, and I'm in college, and we were just reminiscing. And I said, you know what? I can remember I have got my ears pierced. And I'm, I'm sitting in college, got my ears pierced. And I went home, and I was going my way there. I said, I'm going to take it out before I go in. Because I knew Dallas and Paul in that one day, like, just out of respect, I'm like, I'm not doing that. And I wouldn't even say. And one day I went up in that house, and I forgot to take it out. And I'm walking back in. I set my bags in. In the room, I said, Mama, how you been doing? I'm not coming from school and walking around. And I'm going to the refrigerator. Turn around. She cooks it. She said, what is that? <laughs> I said, I felt like somebody shot me in the floor. <laughs> and I was so, felt so bad. Because I know that ain't how you raised me. That ain't what you did. Ain't, this ain't what it was about. Just out of respect. Amen. And I'm getting this out. It's like, I got to get it out here like this to make you conscious of who you before. You before a holy God. Sometimes we apologize to people. I've been around people that know how I live. And because I didn't come all uh, braggadocious and make them feel small. And they might start cursing. And you know what they would do? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I said, no, 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 no. You don't have to apologize to me. Look, I used to do the same old thing. Don't worry about me. Just be concerned about the one that see you. Amen. The people are more inclined to apologize to people, but don't realize, oh, no. It's the God that having mercy on you every day that you got to be conscious you living before him. There's no spot that he's not. There's nothing he can't hear. There's nothing he can't see. He see you in the darkest of dark. You know, we're in the time and hour people think they can sneak can get away with stuff. But I want you to know something. God sees everything. He hears everything. And every move you make, he's there to help you. And it's not
not about, amen, trying to have nothing. Because at the end of the day, you know what? All of us one day, whether we believe or not, is going to have to stand before a true and living God. And he which is holy is wanting mankind to take on his nature. Amen. Because if you stand before him, you can't blame nobody else. You can't point your finger. You can't make yourself be braggadocious. I did this. No, you have to balance out. And what do you mean, preacher? Then how do I balance out? That means I got to learn how to put on Jesus. Over there in the Bible, we're taught how to put on the Lord Jesus and make no provision for the flesh. And when I say flesh, I mean the way you once used to live. I'm not talking and teaching like the common preachers preach. That they'll sit right there and make you think flesh is your body. No, flesh is the lifestyle you live before Christ came in. That's why he said, mortify your members which are upon the earth. Amen. The way you once used to live, we don't live no more. You got to learn how to deny. You got to learn how to tell that devil I once was, but that ain't me no more. And you ain't going to make me believe that's me. I deny it. You say, I want to do it, but you a liar. Amen. So you learn how to deny yourself when you really get in God because holiness is getting in God. When you get in God, God gets in you in such a way where he can your power to come against all the contrariness of mankind and even when it comes to your mind. You don't think you can't. God give you to know you can because you can do all things through Christ that gives you strength. Somebody say amen. We're just talking about holiness because at the end of the day, he said without it, no man is going to see the Lord. You know what? He said be ye holy because I am holy. Peter came back and he said, and I guess he picked up in the spirit. Somebody said, why you got to be holy? Because he said, be holy. For I am holy. That's too much being holy. No, no. You going to find out it's not you, it's him. That worketh the wheel in you. And the do of his good pleasure. That's right. It's him that guides your feet. That's right. Yeah, it wasn't about all oh, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want that folks just recite it to understand it. Uh -huh. He's gonna guide you, he's gonna lead you, he's gonna give you what to do, he's gonna give you what to think on, he's gonna give you his thoughts. Uh -huh. And when he gives you his thoughts, the devil gonna still try to bring his, but you're gonna choose the Lord. You're gonna choose what God says, you're gonna choose that. Why? Because you live by every word that proceedeth out of his mouth. That's why when you come in here, amen, you got to immerse yourself in him. It's not about straddling the fence. It's about forsaking all. Amen. To become his. That's what the disciples had to do. When he called them, they came and he began to teach. And some of that teaching folks said, you know what? We're going to stop right here because he don't went too far. Amen. But them disciples stayed with it. And one day Jesus turned to the disciples. He said, you know what? Will y'all leave also? And Peter stood up and said, and made the declaration, said, to whom shall we go? We forsook all to follow you. We with you. We understand you have blessed our lives. We walking in ways we never walked before. We, we, we're understanding things we never seen. So we're sticking and staying with you. I want to say this this morning to the people of God that the devil is trying to get you to stop following Jesus. Get you to throw the towel in. Now, uh -uh, oh, the devil is a liar. Amen. You keep walking with God and learn through the things you're going through. Just because there's a little trouble that come your way, take out your pen and paper in the spirit and learn all you need to learn while you're going through that. Amen. And know God is still God even though it looks like it's darkness all around you because he is your light. He will show you the way. You just don't give up. You look up. You just don't give up. Don't you throw the towel in. You let the Lord know. Look, Lord, I know you can bring me through. You bought me this far. Didn't take me on through it. Help me how to maneuver. Help me how to be pleasing in your sight. I don't want to go back to where which I've come. I want to go on and receive the end of my salvation. Somebody say amen. As I prepare to get ready to close and when we're looking at this right here this morning, holding this amen will stand as a light in darkness because his God nature is so different. When, isn't it amazing when you get saved and you start going by on folks 
Now that you say, they start saying, man, you change. And people don't realize this. And boy, look at me. That's the wholeness of God that brought that change yeah. in your life. And they said, boy, you look different. And people that say, God, I've seen it in here. I've seen the glow rest upon people. You can see a glow that your complexion change. And you can, you can see that the peace, the joy in their spirit before they say one word. Then I've seen it and been around long enough to see that glow go away. Because they get away from walking in God's nature. And next thing you know, they look stressed. And they look like they got the weight of the world. But what holiness does, it lifts the burden. It destroys the yoke of bondage. It gives you peace when you're troubled. But you realize I ain't got to worry about it because I'm giving it to Father God. I, and I said, Father God, not Daddy God, Father God. Yes. I know these folks who come on in 2024, they're going to say, Daddy. I'm talking to my dad. He's Father God. He didn't say, Daddy God. He's Father God. Excuse me, I had to just go there. Amen. And at the end of the day, praise the Lord, it's a guide for those that seek him after God. He show us his way. Holiness is the highway. That the believers walk down on and learn him. That no matter what they go through, they realize he's their help. He's their strength. And because of that, and the nature you walk in, it keeps you with a positive and an excellent spirit. Do you hear what I'm saying? Think about this. When Joseph was going through what he went through, hated by his brother, had the dream, gave them the word of God, and was hated even more. Amen. Uh, uh, here, here his brothers came against him because what God had done for him chose him and favored him. Amen. And might mean the devil used him, but Joseph never got a bad spirit. Amen. He kept an excellent spirit. I would have you to know that wasn't Joseph all alone. That was God giving Joseph the ability to repel having a bad spirit like them. Amen. Because God had use of him. And all I'm saying this morning to you that's here and he got use of you. Even as Joseph, amen, didn't understand it all when the Lord came upon him with his first coat. That coat of change. That coat of sonship. Amen. My God, my God, as he went on his brother sold him into captivity. Joseph didn't know where he was on his way to. But we came to understand through the reading the story that God had a place for Joseph to be that people might be saved. Amen. And so Joseph had to go through what he went through with uplifted spirit. He had to have not sadness, but he had to keep strength. Amen. You don't see what Joseph got negative. But he went on and they was going to kill him. But God said, you're not going to kill him. You just put him in that ditch because I got somewhere for him to be. Amen. And they dropped him in that ditch thinking they was getting getting over. And God called some other ones to come on in and get him. And they bought him, praise the Lord. And when they bought him, they sold him into slavery. And But Joseph didn't understand. But I tell you what, he didn't get yeah. down on God. He didn't get sad because wherever Joseph went, there was favor. And I want you to know what caused Joseph to be what he was, was the holiness of God. Because he recognized, look Lord, you are my help. His father taught him good. We in the day and hour well, folks miss it because see for Joseph to get like that remember he was close to his daddy amen when you know who his daddy was his daddy made him to know what God said to him and Joseph wasn't like the rest of them he liked hearing about God and faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord amen and so he said right then he was taught some things and when you get taught you are gonna be tried God prepares you through teaching he lets you hear the word that when it comes you might believe when that devil come and testing time come you say well I guess it's my time but I'm going to please the Lord Lord I want you to know I'm going to trust you all the way and Joseph got in that thing because the holiness of God was urging him he was being the path for him to get where he needed to get to and before he got there he had to get prepared and see the second coat that Joseph got from Potiphar was the coat of preparation Amen. Because it was there after he lost his first coat, that second coat, amen, got ripped 
ripped away from him. But God said, I'm going to come upon you with another anointing. Because Joseph went through for that. But that trouble kept pushing him higher. And it was getting him to his place of destination. And I want the church to know and all mankind to know. God had designated for us to be holy. He's designated for us to get to that spot. And it's not for yourself. It's that you might be able to help somebody else. I believe the church is to be able to help somebody. Not condemn them to hell, but pull them from the snares of the devil. And let men and women know God got something for you. He got better for you. Amen. We can look beyond the faults. Look beyond the hang-ups of man and say Jesus loves you. Yeah. That's the mark of a real believer. I know you, I know you bound. I know you own drugs. I know you got habits. You've done all the wrong things, but I need you to know Jesus loves you. Yeah. Amen. The way your life is going is not the way that God designed it. The devil's behind it. I know the devil done told you that God don't love you, and if you was going to be anything, my life wouldn't be like this. I want you to know, don't put that on God. The devil's behind that. Look, God called us to preach a great big God and a defeated devil, and we're going to keep the light on him because men don't realize they're taking a negative attitude towards God because the way that they're going, you need to know there's consequences to sin. Amen. That devil will rip you apart. He would run up the front of you and down the back of you. Amen. But God has provided a way for you to be saved. He didn't trust no angel. He came himself. That one they were sitting up there flying back and forth to my holy, holy, holy. He said, I'm coming down and I'm coming down to be the lamb to be slain for the foundation of that world for all the sins of mankind. And he came down and in bodily form that alone confounds religion it confounds some of these denominations uh, because they don't believe that God can get down in a body just like me and you but brother he came down and wrapped himself up in flesh uh, and took on the name Jesus uh, that represent he was the Christ uh, he was the anointed one that was anointed to do good uh, he came to lift up the bow down he came to give strength to those that are feeble. He came with his holiness to drive out demonic forces. What do you mean? Well, if he was healing folks that had leprosy, why come he can't heal you? If he was opening up blind eyes, why come he can't help you? The same one that walked the dusty earth is still in power. He's still in power and authority. He sits on the throne way up there and my God he can still bring change but he's calling on preachers to preach him. Don't you preach yourself. You keep preaching. Quit preaching like you God. Keep preaching like if you ain't in our way, you ain't saved. Look, he ain't no organization ever gave salvation. Salvation comes from Jesus. I'm letting men and women know because see, we're in the days of titles. And they say, I'm a prophet. I'm an apostle. I'm a pastor. I'm a this and I'm a that. I'm say, look at here. At the end of the day, they all work by one spirit. And if you can't succumb to the one, the other gift, I question what spirit you got. Because you would realize you ain't nothing if God ain't in your life. And so what we got to do is concentrate on helping the church be edified and perfected. And God is calling you and me to holiness. He don't want men with no bad attitude. When you get saved, he's going to deal with you. Amen. He's going to let you know you quit set folks out. No, you ain't supposed to be all mean. You don't say everything that comes to your mind. Don't you know words? Oh my God, are powerful. It's some things you can say and you can't pull them back. You can say things to people and words are spirit and it can cut way deep. But if you've been one of them persons that's been cut like that, God can go way deep and heal you yes, yes. of that hurt. But I need to serve this notice. When people get healed of hurt, if you don't stop doing what you're doing, they're going to see you as not a benefit. At the end of the day, we ought to love one another. That's right. We're to be kind one to the other. That's right. We're to represent how God did us. That's right. Amen. We're to long suffer. We're to forbear with one another. Oh, yeah. We got to be kind with one another. 
Amen. I've been around too long and I ain't see a lot of that in churches. Amen. But they measure themselves by looking at other folks and say, you do this and I don't do that. That ain't what holiness is. Uh -uh, don't let nobody measure you with him. You measure yourself with God. Amen. And if you do that, you'll be like Isaiah. He said, woe is me. Amen. Uh -uh, my ways got to be like him which is holy. I can't look at you and feel good about myself because I don't do what you do. I got to look at God that God can make me to know I'm a minister and a help unto you. Amen. That's what real holiness is all about. Holiness will keep you from hurting. Holiness will lift you up where you have fallen. Holiness will heal your broken spirit because it's the nature of God that's wrapped up inside of you that gives you the ability to see yourself like he sees you and give you the ability to walk before him not pleasing man. There's too many people that are man pleasers and not pleasers of God. They like they see in the sanctuary. I've been around folks and they fight for brick and mortar thinking the church building going to save him. You can get a building and end up in hell. If your heart ain't right, if you ain't pleasing to the Lord, ain't no holiness about you. You going to stand before him and he going to say, I didn't call you to do that. That's not what I'm trying to hear. And so my God, these are the days that you got to know he calling us to holiness. You got to know he's calling you to represent who he is. That your attitude, your actions, and your conduct would be like his. Because as the message came when we weren't here, we got to be ready. That's right. That's right. None of us know the hour and time Anytime. of our departure. Anytime. You know, the religion world is doing people like this. He's coming, he's coming. Look, the Bible told us that is he been coming. But are you ready? Are you ready? If you know he's coming, you're supposed to put off the old man and his deeds. Come on. You're supposed to be ready for him because I want to serve this notice for him. You may not be here when he split the sky because tomorrow ain't promised to you. You might just stop breathing throughout the night. Of when your time is up. No man know the time and hour of his coming because he can come by taking your breath or he can come by coming through the cloud. Whichever one, you got to be ready. And how you check out, you want to check out in his nature now, is how you're going to be raised. If you deceive and lie, being reckless and being sloppy, and you die like that, that's how you're going to be raised up. Because you don't get no more chance. My Lord, my Lord. But if you get it right on this side, uh -huh. And walk in the preparation of the gospel of peace. Because the word prepares you. It don't just prepare you for the devil that's to come. It prepares you for when Jesus is going to come. That's right. That's right. That you can put on the Lord Jesus. Put on his attitude. You, Lord. you, can't, you. can't be walking. It's time for the church to grow up. We can't be talking about, I was dead like this. I was dead like this. But be healed. Because Jesus was done like that. But he kept going. They put him on a rocket cross. But he kept going to die for you and I. He didn't think about himself. He thought about you and me. Yeah. Went through all of the torment. I'm talking about what holiness did. For sinners. For folks that wasn't even in harmony. But he looked beyond them and said, that's my creation. I created man in my image, yes. in my likeness. I got to help him. And he did it. They didn't take his life. He laid down his life. He, laid down. he came to die to pay the price for every man, woman, boy, and girl. I know. I know. That they come to them and bring whatever sins they need to bring. He ain't going to look down on nobody that bring their sins to him. And God set up a priesthood, my, my, my. a royal priesthood, just like in the book of Leviticus, which is the book of holiness. And he had the priests get in this priestly position that when the people came to offer up sacrifice, yeah. they had 
a lifestyle. They had a relationship with God. That they were prepared for when folks came. They didn't judge them. They just did their priestly duties. And took what they had given to them and took that thing and brought it in the way of God. And the people went away free from that situation. Well, what do you bring that out for? Because that's homeless to bring you into the place the church is supposed to be. Instead of talking about they ain't coming in here, let the sinners come in. Ain't no difference if you're a lesbian or homosexual. Come on to Jesus. You come on into this house because I'm persuaded that if you come on holy grounds, amen, you're not going out the same way you come in. He know how to help you. He know where they hurt in it. And see, the church is so immature. They don't understand why people do what they do. It's hurt. They just judge them by the action. You don't understand why that man went to liking men. You don't understand why that woman went to liking women. But God saw it. He knew that it happened. When they got touched, he knew what it happened when they got abused. But if we get full of God, he'll let us see what he's seeing know. And then give us how to minister in the spirit of holiness to those that need help. Church, this urge and call that God is doing, he said, look, I'm calling you to holiness because I want to use you. I want to use you. I want to make you fishermen. I want to use you to bring aid to people. Don't get caught up in your life. Get caught up in me because in me is your life. I got your life here. In me, seek me first. Yes. I'm going to orchestrate it. I'm going to do it. I got all oh, so many things I got for you. But put me first and, let, and watch what I do in your life. Watch the victory I give you. Watch the peace I give you. Watch the wisdom I give you. Watch the strength I give you. This is why he will send a message and say to us Holy, 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 holy. holy. Woe to the preachers that are not standing for God and doing what they're supposed to be doing with compassion. You got to do, you got to preach the gospel with compassion. It is a hammer, but it don't hammer people. That's right. It don't beat them up. See, when you get to thinking that, you just ain't got tired. The devil don't woe you down. The hammer hit the bondage, not the person. Yes. It hit the chain. The not the, it hit the shackles. You don't hit the people. Yes, yes. You don't hurt the people. You destroy yes. that yoke. Yes. You know, it's fire. It did the people that sit up under them abusive preachers and said, they said, boy, that word is a hammer. It'll hit you, boy. No, you've been hit. Because the person didn't know what they were doing with it. But I don't know. I keep telling you. I believe when Harry Tubman ain't closing. When Harry Tubman was helping slaves get free. Whatever utensil she was using. You can't make me believe she was hitting their hands and their ankles. Because somebody would have been watching that. They said, man, that's all right. I'll wait till she perfect that doctor. Because I'm keeping my fingers and my feet now. I'll wait till you get better, Harry. Yes. Harry, was, she yes, knew how to hit that chain. Yes, sir. And sometimes it don't come off with the first hit. Right. You just keep hitting it. The next thing you know, it fall off. Fall off. And when it fall off you, brother, you know you free. Yes. You free. Yes. Ain't nothing like you knowing you free. Yes. And that's what has happened many times with a lot of people that seeking to receive Christ. Hallelujah. You get into holiness. And you're going to walk into liberty and freedom. That's in him. Now I want you to stand on your feet. I want to pray this prayer. For those that are listening in. By the way of internet. Messages many times like this. When it forces you to, to behold who God is. So he can deal with us where we are in our lives. And you hear the call of God. What he's calling you to. He put his fingers on things in your life. You ain't got to tell the next person. He put his fingers on. What he put his fingers on. We got to find ourselves lining up with him because he knows what's best for us all. I want to pray for now for those in internet land. Father, in Jesus' name, 
We thank you this morning for this message. We thank you, yes. Lord, for the call and the cry of what you call all men unto. I'm praying for those that's even in the body of Christ that need to put on the Lord Jesus and need Christ to be formed in their life in the fullness that they will receive this message, that it will give them a different perspective about their walk, that they will find themselves putting on your nature, your character, and your attitude, that they can go in the calling where you have called the church. You did not call the church to put people down and to judge them and to destroy them, but you called the church to be a light. You called the church to be that city that sits on the hill and the salt of the earth. For those, oh God, that have lost their saltiness, let this be the day that the light come in, that they can get back Back on track. I pray for those, oh God, that are in the miry clay that seems to find that can't find their way. But Lord, the light of the glorious gospel will shine unto them and show them the way of holiness. Help them to come unto you. And it's not about them trying to do something, but let you do it in them. Because it is you that work the will and the do. And so on today, I bind and rebuke every force of Satan, every strategy to devil has concocted against the hearers on today that there might be freedom and liberty you said what we pine on earth you were pining in heaven and what we loose you were loosen in the heavens let this be the hour of power that liberation will begin to take place in the lives of the hearer you said faith coming by hearing and hearing by your word God do it for men and women do it for our sons and our daughters do it our neighbors, oh God. Let them taste of you. Let them see you for themselves. Not just hearing about it through us, but let them taste for themselves that they can see how good you are. These things we pray and ask in Jesus' name. And all of God's people shouted hallelujah. hallelujah. Come on, let's lift our hands. Let's praise hallelujah. Him. Hands, amen, for the deliverance that God is bringing in the lives of those that's hearing the message. Amen. Praise the Lord. We thank God. You go with God, he will go with you. For those of us that's in the room on this morning, amen, I feel the power and the spirit of God to pray. Amen.